They chose Ock by taking the first character of the last names of the three men who wrote the command. Formatting is like editing, except it has more capabilities. Therefore, the syntax of the awk command is similar to the syntax of the sed command. Awk requires a pattern to identify the lines to format and an action that you want to take to format those lines chosen by the pattern. Specifically note the curly braces around the action commands in an awk argument. These are required so that awk knows which lines are part of the formatting action. In awk, if you leave out a pattern, every line is chosen for the action. If you leave out the action, lines matching the pattern are printed. Like said, patterns that are regular expressions must be enclosed in forward slashes. For example, here's one way that you can print out all the lines that begin with a capital S. You could do this with grep, or you could do it with this awk command. Note there's only a pattern, no action. Without an action, awk prints the lines that match the pattern. Another way to do this is to use awk's print action. The print action says print the line that matches the pattern. Here's another way to print those lines that match, beginning with a capital S. Note that the word print is inside the curly braces. This is normally what awk commands will look like. A pattern and an action inside of curly braces. Also note that the entire first argument of awk is enclosed inside single quotes. Again, this is to protect awk's formatting argument from the shell and its search for meta characters. What gives awk its formatting power is its ability to reference individual words on a printed line. Each field on a line is identified by a separate awk symbol. In awk's terminology, a field is any set of characters offset with spaces or tabs. Dollar one identifies the first field on a line. Dollar two represents the second field on a line. Dollar three represents the third field on a line, and so on. In the phone list, dollar one would be the last name and a comma. The space delimits the two fields. Dollar two would be the first name, and dollar three would be the phone number. I can use this terminology to print various fields on a line. This awk command says to find the lines whose phone numbers begin with a one through five, and to print the last name and the phone number, fields one and fields three, from that line. Note the comma between the dollar one and the dollar three. That tells awk to separate the fields it's printing with a single space. As you can see, this command prints the last name and the phone number of the lines that match the pattern. Note how easy it is to change the format of a file using awk. For example, suppose I wish to print the first name followed by the last name, followed by the phone number. That is, I want to shift around fields one and two on the line. All I have to do is tell awk to print the line in the format $2, $1, and then $3. You see the command line here. However, note when I execute this command that there's no longer a tab between the name and the phone number. That's because awk treats the tab simply as a field separator and throws it away. To insert a tab between the last name and the phone number, I can tell print to insert the fixed character tab there. 
I do this by enclosing a tab in double quotes as part of my print formatting line. You see how it works here. Note that when I run this command, print displays the first name, then the last name, a tab, and then the phone number. Anything I enclose inside double quotes in a print line is printed as it's listed inside the double quotes. One more capability of the print command should be mentioned. If you want to print a blank line, you can do this by printing nothing. That is, by sending the print command an empty set of double quotes. Here's an example of a fairly detailed awk command that prints out the string name and then the first two fields. On the next line, it prints out the word phone number and then the third field, and then it prints an empty line. This is your first example of a multi-line awk command. Take a close look and notice that the single quotes are at the beginning and end of the entire awk formatting command. That is, all three of these print commands are inside a single set of single quotes. Because single quotes will quote everything inside them, the shell does not see the new line at the end of each command line, and instead will send the new line as part of the argument. Awk requires that multiple commands be separated by new lines, so this arrangement works well. Note the two greater thans on lines two and three of this awk command. In reality, these have nothing to do with the awk command and you don't enter them. Instead, they're printed by the shell. They're called the shell's secondary prompt. The shell prints its secondary prompt whenever the previous line ended with a quoted new line. It's the shell's way of reminding you that you're still on the previous command line. Awk has several advanced formatting features. I'd like to cover two of them here. First, Awk reserves the patterns BEGIN and END to represent actions you want performed either before it begins reading data or after it is through reading lines from the file. For example, Suppose you want to put out a title on your output. Well, you'd want to put the title out before you begin printing lines. That's the purpose of the begin pattern. This awk command says to put out the title, name a tab, then phone number, before you begin printing lines in the file. When this command is run, it will print out a title and then each line, first name, last name, a tab, and then the phone number. Notice that this awk command had two actions. That is, it has two separate lines, each contained inside a separate set of curly braces. This is completely legal, and in fact, you often will do that, especially when you have begin or end patterns as part of your awk program. The second capability I want to refer to is that R can maintain variables and manipulate them with arithmetic operators, plus, minus, multiply, and divide. This comes in very handy when, for example, you want to add a column of numbers. Let me give you an example of how I use it. I have to keep track of my expenses throughout the year so that I can get reimbursed from my company and the company can report this on their income taxes. I keep a file called expenses.list. Here's what the current one looks like. The format is very specific. It's the date of the expense, a tab, the amount of the expense, a tab, and then a description of what that expense involved. In AUX, 
terminology, I want to add up the second column on every line. I can do this with the action total equals total plus dollar two. Note that the sum of total and the second field on this line is stored back in the total variable. This allows you to keep a running total from line to line of the expenses that have accumulated. Note that I'm not printing anything out in this action. I'm simply keeping a total. To print the value, I need an end action because the total is only accurate at the end of the data. Therefore, I need a second action which says at the end of the data, print total. While I know it takes a bit of typing, let me show you how this command works. The command is awk, opening brace, total equals total plus dollar two. That's the end of that action and I close the brace. The next action starts with the pattern end. I then want to print the value total at the end of this list. I then identify the name of the file I wish to use, which is expenses.list. And as you see, in a moment, the expense total pops on the screen. This marks the end of the section on awk. You'll notice that there are two chapters on awk in the course text. The first one's an introductory chapter, and the second one's a more advanced chapter that covers more programming than we've demonstrated here. I urge you to read both of those chapters. Also, you should work the exercises in the course notes before moving on to the next command.